Yeah. As we look into our own hearts, Lord, we, Lord, we, in the light of this instruction, God, this exhortation to pursue love, Father God, we pray that um, even as you poured out your love into our hearts, God, Lord, Romans chapter 8, Lord, very clear that the love of God, the agape of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, uh, we just pray that we would pursue this kind of love, God, that we would, Lord, express or extend to others this kind of love, God. Uh, we know that uh, the flesh comes in the way. We know that our own unrenewed thinking and uh, thinking patterns, Lord, come in the way as a barrier. Lord, today we ask, oh God, that all these would be removed, that we may, Lord, um, Lord, extend your love in truth, Father God, um, uh, to others who need it. And, and to ourselves, Lord, that we would love ourselves the way you love us, God. That we would see ourselves in truth the way you see us, Father God. And Father God, we, we also pray that we may be zealous for spiritual gifts. For these are the expressions of the Spirit. These are your expressions, God, the way you express yourself to us and to others, God. And so, God, may we be zealous. Lord, I just pray this, um, we pray this morning that uh, whatever is hindering us, Lord, whatever is causing us to cool down in our spirit, whatever is causing uh, us to uh, cool down that hunger and thirst and that fire and passion, God, um, it could be maybe sin, it could be maybe compromise, uh, it could be lack of focus, a distraction, whatever it is, God, that is causing us to compromise on that, hold back on that, withhold, God. Uh, Father, we pray that that will be dealt with this morning, God, that uh, that will be removed, God. Things that need to be uprooted will be uprooted, Lord, that things that need to be set right will be set right, things that need to come aligned, Father God. If we need to come aligned in our thinking, God, in our imaginations, oh God, let it be so, Father God. Let it be so, oh Master. Lord, from the depths of our heart, may we desire, Lord, spiritual gifts. And Lord, even as your as the exhortation is, the instruction is that, especially that we may prophesy. Yes, Lord, as, as your people, as your children, Father God, may we know your heart. May we know what's in your heart. May we know, O oh God, what your whispers are, Father God. May we know, O oh God, what you are speaking, Lord, you are. Lord, you said, O oh God, that you would guide us with your eyes, O oh Father God, um, that you would speak to us, O oh Father God. This is the way, walk in it. And, and Lord, we pray, God, that may we be recipients of those instructions, Father God. You said, O oh God, Lord, in your word that, uh, Lord, when, when men sleep, O oh God, that uh, you will, uh, the dreams and visions, O oh Father God, you would speak and seal our ears, awaken our ears to hear and seal our ears with instruction, God. And I pray that will be the case, Father God, especially that we may hear your voice and Lord, obey and do according to what you ask us to. And so we commit ourselves to that, Lord. We commit ourselves to that, O oh, Father God. May we take this up seriously, each one of us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, praise God. Awesome. Let's, um, let's look at, um, you know, as we've been studying about uh, understanding the spiritual gifts, you know, one of the first things that we looked at was that we need to commune with the Holy Spirit. Right? Commune meaning have a deep relationship with Him, deep relationship with God. Because these are these belong to him and he wants to display it through our lives okay so it is to help people okay look at it that way you know it is uh, it is not to um, elevate us but really to help people okay it is to bring comfort it is to solve problems in people's lives it is to change situations in people's lives so if you do look at it you know it's a wonderful thing Right. And we can say, yes, Lord, I need more of you. I need more of you to manifest yourself through me and in me. Okay. So our, uh, you know, the last thing we looked at, we need to have that friendship. We need to have that fellowship. We need to have that partnership with the Holy Spirit. Right. So that is the first and foremost thing. Okay. So let's look at a few more things about the gifts. Uh, we saw that gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to all believers. Okay. And not just to some special super special, super spiritual believers, but these gifts are actually for all believers. And that's why we are asked to pursue or go after, desire. Okay. What is the point in desiring and not having? 
why should the bible say desire if the objective of that end result of that is for us to not have it right so the, the instruction is to desire that we walk in it right so the uh, the, <clears throat> the so the question is okay is it for all believers or is it for some? you know these so if it is for all believers why but we think it's for all believers Anyone? Um, those of you who are online, <clears throat> you know why? Uh, why can we say boldly, <clears throat> confidently, without any doubt, that the gifts of the Spirit are for all believers? <clears throat> because it's in a, it is written in the Word exactly. <laughs> Because it is a scripture, uh, instruction, <clears throat> uh, but we need to know where. We need to know, you know, what in what context. Okay, so um, what scripture can we look at? <clears throat> okay. Okay. So Joel two. <clears throat> Uh, prophecy, uh, the, the prophecy of uh, Prophet Joel it says, In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. So, we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and which is what Peter said, you know, in this, uh, yeah, in Acts chapter 2, he said, This is what Joel prophesied in the first message after being anointed, filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what he said. Okay, so <clears throat> that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, and this is what will happen. They will dream dreams, they will have visions, etc. Right? Um, what else? You know, okay, this is a broad this thing, so we can say, okay, people would argue. No, it doesn't talk about gifts, no. It talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It talks about okay, visions, prophecy, but you know, where does it say rest of the gifts? You know. So what do you think? <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. This verse that we just read and prayed, it says. Desire spiritual gifts. It doesn't say desire spiritual gift, one gift. Yes? It says desire spiritual gifts. And this is instruction for all believers. Okay. One more verse is uh, we, if you back up to chapter 12 and the last verse, chapter 12, verse 31. But earnestly desire the best gifts. So we're going to look at that. What is this best gift? We're going to look at that. But here, in, the, in these two verses, um, we see that this message is for all believers. Therefore, this instruction for desiring spiritual gifts is also for all believers, which means that all believers can manifest all the gifts of the Spirit. Okay? So we need to have no doubt in our minds um, that the gifts of the Spirit are for all believers. Now we also uh, learned. You know, we, we were looking at certain things over and over again because we tend to forget, right? Uh, we, but we also know that there are ministry gifts. What are ministry gifts? We studied that, or ministry offices, as we might call them. Yeah, correct. So, are these for all or for some? For some, who decides that? The Lord Jesus decides. Okay, so Ephesians 4 talks about that. Uh, yes, uh, Nina. Um, verse 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, we'll come to that again, you know, uh, a better explanation of that again. Um, each one it's given for the benefit of all. Okay, now that verse can be used both ways. So uh, we'll just come back to that verse in a little bit. Okay, um, twelve seven yes uh, is given to each one for the profit of all. Okay, now um, now we also know that there are these ministry gifts, so we need to understand that these ministry gifts are given as as per the will of God, as per the will of the Lord Jesus, and He gives it to some. Okay, but we also know that yes, some are called to be prophets, but all can prophesy. Some are called to be evangelists, but all can 
share the gospel in evangelize, right? So we know that, yes, all believers can move in these gifts, but some are called to these ministry offices. Okay. So the thing is, just because I can prophesy, just because I share the gospel, okay, does not make me an evangelist. Just because I prophesy, share a word of knowledge, does not make me a prophet. Okay, so this means that the ministry gift is a, it's a proven, it's a it's a consistent thing. It is what people are called to walk in day in and day out. And the Lord Jesus desires decides that, right? Very clear. Any doubts? No. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the second thing we saw was that the gifts of the Spirit are gifts of grace. Okay, this is not something that we earn. Yes, it is something for us to desire uh, that the Lord will use us and the Lord will move in us and through us. But it's not something that we perform in order to get as a price. Like these are gifts of grace. What does that mean? Gifts of grace. When you say it's a gift of grace, what does that mean? Sorry. It is something that is freely given. I don't earn it. I can't say, hey, I read the word cover to cover three times this year, so I need to have all the nine gifts working in my life. It's not something. I, I know I, I, I lived a very righteous life this whole month, therefore I need to have the gifts working in my life. It's not a price to be earned. It's a grace that is given. Okay, So that's something that we saw. Okay. Okay. Um, so how do we manifest these gifts? Okay, so we walk in love, we desire the spiritual gifts. Those are two things, very important. Third thing is we step out in faith. We take a risk, right? Um, so which means we need to be sure, we need to be confident. At the same time, we need to take a risk. Okay, so and it's something that we continue to grow in as we take a step of faith, as we, uh, you know, release these gifts, especially the relatory gifts of, uh, you know, uh, word of knowledge or word of wisdom or prophecy. We will grow in it, right? And we will grow in hearing his voice clearly, instructions clearly, uh, recognizing the voice of the Holy Spirit, and also, you know, accuracy. And we will grow in it. Right? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so Ann? <laughs> okay, one second. Let me just, I need to come out of this. Um, okay, we are in page number 53, I think, sorry. 53 in the, 53 in the notes, um, the gifts of the spirit in that um, book, gifts of the spirit. 53, yeah, got it. Okay. So we are addressing um, those questions. Okay. Okay, so what are these best gifts? 1 Corinthians 12, 31. What are these best gifts that Paul is talking about? Is it prophecy? Is it uh, healing? What do you think is the best gift? or the best gifts, plural, right? Sorry? Mm -hmm. uh, but then he says, um, you know, earnestly desire the best gifts. Why does he say that? What is it? And also, you know, sometimes the use a super, uh, it's one thing, but he says plural, best gifts. So, so sorry? Okay, so the okay the question is uh, I asked a question now again comes a question. <laughs> is it the fivefold you know uh, ministry gifts? Okay, what do you think? What are the best gifts? Tongues. Okay, the gift which glorifies. See, all the gifts actually glorify. They are supposed to edify people, which means build up people, bless people, and glorify Christ. Because it's the work of the Holy Spirit, and that's what the Holy Spirit does, right? He always lifts up Jesus. 
so the thing is this you know when um, suppose i want to drink coffee okay, and uh, i can drink coffee from a cup right a full cup or i can drink it from a saucer right you pour it in a saucer but what do you think will be the best way to drink from the cup see i can i can uh, ha drink it with a spoon also it's going to take a long time <laughs> right sip after sip but if i let me finish mm. but if i drink from a cup that's the best way it's it's keeping it hot it's keeping it together it's convenient so that's the best way to drink right uh, a hot cup of coffee so so here's the thing what is the best gifts the gifts which is just right for that situation for that need okay so somebody is going through uh, severe problems you know they they are going through a crisis in life and uh, they don't know what to do um, they have tried out all options and they don't know what to do and then you know, you've been praying for them you pray for that person and god puts in your heart a counsel a word of wisdom okay an instruction it's like a key that unlocks that very thing that they've been trying to unlock okay a word of wisdom and so you share that word of wisdom you know saying do this and uh, and that you know I, i believe that god is asking you know giving this sense that god is giving this uh, instruction when you do this and they pray about it and they feel a peace about it they go and they do it and it solves the problem okay. now when the when the problem is when the person is going through that kind of a crisis um which is you know some something that needs to be solved maybe in the business maybe relationally now the best gift gift there could be or is the word of wisdom or it could even be a, a prophetic word or you know a gift of prophecy gift of healing is not the right one for that moment right okay so um so the best gift is the one which actually takes care of that need for that moment so he's, he's saying you know you see somebody in need and maybe you, there's a problem to be solved earnestly desire the best gifts you know when somebody is having a physical problem um well the best gifts to desire go after gifts of healing or a working of miracles or even gift of faith right faith that can remove mountains so so he's saying earnestly desire the best gifts so the best gift is not like you know you look at the list and say okay maybe this is the best gift this is the second best this is the third best right it's not that it's the one which takes care which is just right for that situation which is just right for that need if okay, somebody is going through very depressed very discouraged and um, you know here's the prophetic word a prophecy we see is edification brings ex edification exhortation and comfort okay so this is word which comes and it brings in comfort it brings edification and that's the whole the person's life is changed from that moment on it is lifted up out of that depression out of that um, you know the thing that they're going through right so that's the best gifts okay so um remember that um okay so other question can these gifts or operation of these gifts uh use of these gifts can it be taught can it be taught what do you think maybe <laughs> okay so what are we doing right now you know i'm teaching <laughs> so so the answer is yes you know see um the lord jesus told the disciples you go make disciples okay preach the gospel make disciples teaching them to observe all the things that i have taught you okay so so the disciples actually went out they preached the gospel uh, and uh, they taught them everything they baptized them they taught them everything that the lord jesus had told them so also you know like we see in paul um paul was in you know corinth um he we read that he was there for about 18 months and in that 18 months he seems to have taught the church all that jesus had taught him right yeah yes sir
I'm uh, sorry, how to recognize uh, and oh, uh, oh, about the teaching gift. Oh, what kind of gifts I have? Okay, okay. Um, so your question is how to recognize what gifts I have. Okay, so the thing is, uh, you know, like we've been seeing, every believer, okay, can manifest the gifts of the Spirit, all the gifts of the Spirit. So thing is, you desire, you learn about the gifts, um, and you learn about, okay, how does the Holy Spirit release these gifts or express Himself in these ways? And you step out in faith, okay, because the you know the, the the instruction is desire the best gifts and the best gifts are the best gifts for that particular situation for that need so i need to learn about all the gifts understand about all the gifts and desire them and ask the lord say god you know here's this need please use me and i'm going to step out in faith i'm going to lay hands and heal um, uh, lay hands and pray uh, lord heal this person lord i'm going i'm just going to pray for this person lord give me a word that will bless them and encourage them um you know things like that. So that, yeah, that. Thing. So if you are asking about the ministry gift, right? You know, am I called to be an apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher? You know, that would be something that the Lord would call. The Lord would use you consistently, like we were you know, talking about it earlier. He would use you in that way, either to the church or you know uh, the others whom you're connected with, he's going to use you in that way over and over again and call you into that. You know? So you find yourself ministering. You find yourself, okay, I'm just leaning more towards this. I want to share the gospel. Wherever I go, I want to share the gospel. Wherever I go, um, you know, I see, okay, I want to start some work there, you know, a Bible study, church, something. It could be, you know, um, uh, wherever, you know. So that's the desire that God has put in you, to go to people, places where, no work is there, and then he wants you to start. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay. What is the difference between teacher and uh, okay, pastor? Get okay. You're going to learn about that in detail one full semester. But then, uh, this is the you know. Uh, so the pastoral gift, uh, the the word pastor um, actually comes from the word shepherd. Okay, so he's a shepherd. Um, in the Greek, the word poeman is used. So, uh, or poemane, I don't know. So, um, so he's a shepherd. So he's one who is watching over, who's nourishing, who's protecting uh, the sheep. Like right? he's feeding the sheep, um, he's nourishing the sheep, and and that's the thing. And in the Second Peter also we see, you know, Peter saying that, you know, you are, we are he's the uh, great shepherd. And we are all working under him, right? Uh, and the flock belongs to him. So we see that uh, you know that's the shepherd's call or the pastor's call, one who feeds spiritually, one who nourishes, one who strengthens, maybe corrects all that. So so that's the shepherd's pastor's calling. When it comes to the teacher, you know, a teacher is one who grounds the person in the word of God, which means the teaching gift. The, for the teacher, you know, this is, the, this, is the, this is how the gift operates. There is a deep revelation from the Word of God. There's, uh, you know, uh, deep understanding of the Word of God. It's not just a superficial thing, but it's a deep understanding, revelation uh, about the Word of God. About And it's also not the, just the depth, but also the width of the subjects, you know, everything. So the Lord works in such ways. So the person, uh, also, the second thing is also to be able to communicate in a simple manner. Okay, so the teacher not only has deep understanding or the Holy Spirit gives that person revelation and deep understanding, but also the ability to communicate it in a very simple way so people can be grounded in the Word of God. So a teacher always, you know, you know, has this things like why, what, it's not satisfied, right? Asking that question, okay, why is it like that? Why, what, uh, when, how, where, right? So... And the Holy Spirit is more than willing to just pour out that revelation. And, and the teacher gets the revelation uh, from not just information, but revelation about the, uh, you know, about the Word of God so that they can minister to ground them, to establish them in the Word of God. Yes. So the thing about fivefold ministry is that these gifts overlap and flow together. 
So usually the pastoral and the teaching gift goes together because the pastor does the whole um, the role of nourishing the flock and also you know getting them strong in the word. So it'll go together. Uh, it can even be uh, you know the evangelist, uh, prophetic, you know going together. I mean, there's no chapter and verse, but this is what we see. Right? But also Paul says uh, about himself. He calls himself an apostle. He calls himself a teacher, right? Uh, and he ministers in those ways. So we see that these gifts flow together, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Prophetic office and prophetic gift. Yeah. Yeah, so when we study that, also you're going to take a semester to study about the understanding of the prophetic. So we see that uh, we talked about three things, right? Gifts of the Spirit. We talked about membership gifts that in the body of Christ, Romans 12, um, where one ministers to one another. Then we also looked at the ministry office, which is in Ephesians 4. Okay. So now uh, all of us can prophesy. Now, how do I know that I'm called to be the prophet? Like, see, the office of the prophet is more than. A simple uh, gift of prophecy, okay, or a simple word of prophecy, which will bring exhortation, edification, and comfort. It's more than that. It's also predictive in nature, foretelling. Um, it is also directive in nature. You need to move from this city to that city. It is also corrective in nature, like Nathan. Nathan went to the king and he corrected him. Right. So the, because he, the, the Lord revealed that you know you need to. Uh, this is what is wrong with going wrong. So um, he did all that. So uh, and also uh, you see that a prophetic um, gift or the ministry gift of the prophet is also um, the realm of influence. So it is uh, it's not just the local church. It's not just a local gathering, but it is to the city. You are prophesying to the nation to the nation you're announcing the moves of god like if you read about agabus the prophet in acts in the book of acts right we see that he announced to the world hey there's going to come a famine right um so you know things like that so a, a prophet who's walking in the prophetic office the lord will actually enhance the realm uh, when i say realm realm of influence which means the the geographical territory is also because that person has to function in that way, right? So it's a journey that we make, but we start with just hearing God, obeying God. It's as simple as that, right? And and it never stops, right? Through the journey, it's never it never stops. That simple thing, foundational thing, never stops. Okay, any any questions from the online um, class, online community? Okay, so we're looking at. Um, the the, the 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 simple premise that spiritual things can be taught okay because we see that paul spent about a year and a half with with the corinthians and he seems to have taught everything the lord jesus himself in, a, in the great commission said that okay this is what you need to do you need to teaching them to observe okay so we can we can teach a person, how to follow Jesus, how to read the word of God, how to pray, how to worship, all that we teach. In the same way, we can teach about the gifts. Teach about how the what the gift is, how it operates, right, and what one needs to do. But then it stops there, right? I can't teach you, say these words and pray in tongues. Now, that would be error. Like that would be a heresy. You can't get into that. Uh, I can't say, okay, uh, you know, I can, I can just bring that person. We can teach, bring that person, expose that person to the truth and to the power of the Holy Spirit. And from there, that person, he or she, takes that step of faith and starts moving in it. Okay? Because in the Old Testament, we see there was a school of the prophets. Okay, what was that school? You know, there was a bunch of prophets who had junior prophets, senior prophets. So this 
uh, you know, senior prophet, if you can call that person that, would be teaching the other prophets, okay, school of the prophets. This is what you need to do. This is how you, you know, function and so on. So must have been exciting, right? So we see that spiritual things can be taught and needs to be taught. People should not be ignorant of spiritual gifts. Okay, uh, we need to we need to teach, right? And it can be very empowering, liberating um, people to understand. Hey, God can use me, right? And uh, it be so empowering that the people will move in that. Right? They discover their call, they discover their destiny, and then fulfill God's um, call for them. Okay. Um, what else can we? Um, what other questions? Okay, so gifts of the spirit is it only for when we when believers gather together, or is it for the world outside also? What do you think? Gifts of the spirit. Mm. One Corinthians fourteen and twenty. 22, okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So he's talking about gift of tongues, gift of prophecy, and um, the use of both in a congregation. He's actually addressing that. So he's uh, talking about how uh, if it is prophecy and then someone who does not know comes in, the secrets of his heart are revealed. And what does that person say? Truly God is among you and begins to worship. So the person is drawn to God. Right? Uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Um, working of miracles, gifts of healings, everything. These are signs which point to Jesus, um, signs that point to the fact that God loves them, that God cares for people, and um, uh, draws them to the heart of God, draws people to the heart of God. So these gifts are not restricted for just for believers, you know, for praying for one another, but for others also, especially for, you know, uh, outside where you can actually share the gospel and um, you can believe God. Okay, God, you know, give me a word for this person, right? You're, you're handing out maybe invites, right? Um, so just ask the Lord next time, Lord, give me a word for this person. Maybe an encourage, it can be an encouraging word. Okay, it, need, it needn't be something, okay, you were born on 30th of January. <laughs> it need not be like that. It can be like that. It need not be also, but it can be a very, very simple word of encouragement saying, hey, God knows who you are. And maybe you just felt, felt like, you know, sharing about the love of God, saying, okay, God loves you and he will, he's, he's taking care of you. He knows you. Maybe it's just that, a word of encouragement, comfort. But it goes a long way. It's like uh, for that person, right? just what that person uh, needs. So, um, yeah. Um, sorry? Testing of these gifts. Okay, so we are going to get into the other um, thing, um, which is, okay, we're skipping a few things, but it's fine. Uh, how do we, uh, why should we test these gifts? Okay. How also? Okay, so I think we looked at it yesterday. Okay, it's a vision. Okay, so gifts need need to be tested, especially the revelatory gifts of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, maybe uh, prophecy. These things need to be tested. Okay, so the question is, why should we test? Okay, see if you look at one Thessalonians five. Okay, one Thessalonians five. See, we're just laying a foundation, a background before we get into the details of the gifts. Right, one Thessalonians chapter five and uh, yeah, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, um, nineteen to twenty-one. Do not quench the spirit. What does quench mean? Put water, putting putting out the fire. 
don't quench the spirit. Do not despise what? Prophecies. You know, saying, hey, this was always saying this. He's always wrong. <laughs> don't despise it. Why do we despise for prophecies? You know, it's coming from God, the prophetic gift. But why do you think people would despise prophecies? Despise means to hate. Right? I, I don't want it. Why do you think people would despise prophecy? Would anyone despise prophecy? It's difficult for them to receive. They have to change their attitude. Okay, maybe it's a word of correction. Maybe okay. Mm. Then uh huh. Okay, so maybe it's a it's a very corrective word. Okay, that's possible. Yes. Um, anyone from the online? Um, Uh, okay, this is the answer for why should we test? Okay, uh, I'll just keep that on pause. Yeah, but why should anyone despise prophecies? Yeah, Anand. Okay, the. Okay, so you you think that okay that this person doesn't know how to prophesy? Uh, you know, I've seen him. I've seen his life. So we look at the messenger, and we decide. This guy, no chance. I know what he listens to. I know what he watches. <laughs> uh, I know that God can speak through a donkey, but uh, <laughs> but you know, well, surely not this not this donkey. <laughs> yeah. So we come to such conclusions, right, based on the messenger, or maybe you know, there's been an abuse of it, right? Maybe people try to control you, saying, "Hey, you need to." You, you're earning so much. God is saying you put all your salary, you know, here, here in this place now. Put the cover. Put it. Maybe there's been a manipulation, abuse of it. So, you know, just tired. So people say prophecy. I don't want. You know. So, so here Paul is writing and he's saying, don't despise prophecies. It's a good thing. Don't quench the work of the spirit. Next verse. What does he say? Test all things. So the, the, the issue, the, the, if there is a problem, if there is some kind of a confusion because of our experience, past history uh, with the supernatural um, and the gifts and so on, you know, suppose saying, don't despise it. The gift is good because it's an expression of the Holy Spirit. But we need to test. Okay, so that's the instruction. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Okay, what does hold fast mean? Have a tight grip on what is good. Okay. Yeah, so have a tight grip on what is good. So what does it mean? Don't have a tight grip on what is not good. <laughs> okay, which means when you're testing, there's going to be some things that are good, right? There's going to be things that are good. You, you better have a tight grip on it because these are good things that God is revealing, God is showing, God is bringing you away. Have a whole tight hold on it. At the same time, the opposite of it. If it is not so good, if you discern that, okay, this part of it, well, I'm a little doubtful, don't have a tight grip on it, which means don't just take it in right um, you don't have to hold fast okay so that is the other side of it uh, I mean, the outcome of testing then verse 22 abstain from every form of evil okay so so this is the instruction the instruction about testing so why testing okay. the thing is this that god is a holy god the gift is good god is a good god the gift is a good gift, but we as human beings, we are not perfect vessels yet, right? We are, we have our, you know, our own biases. We have our own prejudices. We have our own uh, uh, unrenewed part of us. We are still works in progress. 
because as vessels we are not perfect yet right we don't so so the word is the instruction is test it okay so in case there is any kind of a contamination or in case you know the the water is good but the the tap through which it flows might have something so he's saying you know you test it okay so maybe you go you're prejudiced against uh, you know maybe uh, uh, god gives me a word and uh, it's for all tamil tamil speaking people and i'm prejudiced against tamil people <laughs> let's say you know i i've had a bad experience with these tamil guys you know uh, i'm just saying that because i'm tamil so i can say that um, so I, I, all these tamil guys are like this okay so then uh, my the, the word which god gives you know i just see it through that through that prejudice and then i give that okay or the way in which god dealt with me okay so god called me uh, as i was working in the corporate uh, sector god called me into ministry okay, that's how god called me now if i you know let's say somebody has god's call on their life and god is calling them to be whatever and god is saying okay you go encourage that person and um, you know affirm that he or she has a call upon her life and i'm going to use um, so if i go and say okay god got a call on your life god is going to use you uh, so therefore you need to you know quit your job okay you need to quit your job move out because that's how he worked with me so the message is accurate god's got a call but then i'm mixing it with my experience right that's how god worked with me so that's how god would, must work with him or her so i'm saying uh, so you need to you know get ready to leave your job and then move on and god is going to use you how that would be dangerous that would be imp that, is, that won't be correct that is tainted okay for one part of it is good the other part of it is it's not good so all is saying test all things hold fast to what is good get a good grip you test like renchen asked yesterday you know that question you know um if it's um, how do i know it's god speaking and you know so this is the thing we submit it and you say okay you also test this is what i have i have you know received but you check you test and so testing is for both sides the one who is ministering in the gift and for the one who is the recipient of it okay okay so we'll stop here and we'll get back